In this video overview, we're going to give you a guide to the two rail sweep function in Aspire. As you'll see, we're going to work through a number of different examples to show you all the features of this particular tool. And that'll help you to see just how powerful this is, even though it relies on a relatively simple concept to use. We go ahead, come down, we're on the modeling tab here, and the two rail sweep tool is here. This is the icon for it. If we click on that, come into it, we can see the first thing is it's expecting me to have selected some vectors when we go into the function. So it's telling me that I currently have an invalid selection and that's because I have absolutely nothing selected in the 2D view. What this tool is looking for, as the name would suggest, is two rails. So if I select this to the first rail, I hold down shift to select my second rail. So now it tells me the drive rails are okay and then it's looking for a cross section. So if I hold down shift and hit this shape, what the software is going to do is take this cross section and drive it along the two rails in order to make our three dimensional shape. So I can see now by the green check mark that the vectors I've got selected are all valid. What I can do if I look in the 2D view here though is I can see these lines don't appear to be joined up evenly along the shape and that's really what you're looking for when you create the two rail sweep shape. If I went ahead and hit apply now this is actually going to create a shape which is twisted over on itself, which is not what I was looking for. What I'm looking for is for both of the rails to start in the same place and flow in the same direction. But at the moment we see from the red node here and the blue node here that they're in opposite directions and these lines actually show the way that the cross section is being extruded along this. Within the function we can reverse the rails, so if I said I wanted to reverse rail 1, you can see what it's going to do is bring this rail so that it starts on the left here. Now I get a nice even um, distribution of the cross section along the shape and we can see we get a much cleaner shape and the shape that I was looking for down in the 3D view there. Now if we take a moment just come down to the bottom of the two rail sweep manager we'll see we have a place for defining the name of the component we're creating with this and choosing the combine mode. And this works in just the same way as it does with the create shape form. So if I was happy with what I built now, I might go ahead and um, give this a name. We could choose the combine mode. I could hit close and then we'll see our shape in the 2D view as a grayscale preview component, here it is in the 3D view and up in the component tree with whatever name we assign to it. So once I create the shapes in there, they're just going to be added to the tree in the same way as any other component that we create in the software. Let's go ahead and just select this and delete it. Now let's go back into the 2 rail sweep function and look at a number of the other options that are available within the form. Now with the last example, we selected our top rail, shift and selected the bottom rail, shift and selected one cross section, but it's possible to have up to three cross sections within your part. So if I go ahead and now select a second cross section here, the triangle, we need to make sure we reverse the first rail again so we've got the shape to be even, and now I come down and hit apply, we can see the shape that that's going to give me. It's going to blend from the rounded shape which I selected first, which goes on the first point of each of the rails, to the triangular shape, which was the second shape we selected, and that's going to go at the other end. Now it's even possible for me to go ahead and select three cross sections for any single two rail sweep. So if I just click now off this, it's going to ask me if I want to keep the current two rail sweep. I'm going to say no. I'm going to reselect my vectors, but now I'm going to select three cross sections, again holding shift down while I do that, and if we hit apply, now we can see that I've got a shape that goes from the rounded profile, in the middle it's becoming the triangular profile, and then it's going back to the rounded profile at the other end. And that's all based on these cross sections and the shape of the rails that I have selected. Let's look at some of the other options available within the form. In a minute we're going to come back and show you some options that use connect rail nodes and scale cross section with width. We can with this shape either cap the start, if we check that you'll see it just takes the end cross section and rolls it down um, and caps the end there with the same cross section down to the modeling plane. 
and you can also cap the end of the shape as we can see there and do one or the other depending which of those options you have checked. Another option we can show you using the shapes we've got selected here is the option to blend smoothly or blend linearly. You can see at the, at the moment there's quite a smooth blend between these three shapes. If I choose to blend linearly then I'm actually going to see a crease because instead of it flowing down and through the middle cross section smoothly it's going to flow down to that middle cross section in a straight line because we chose to do it linearly and then flow back up again in a straight line to the other end. So that's what the blend smoothly and blend linearly options do. You can see the shape changing as we click on that. Let's just go ahead and close this for a moment. I'm going to delete the shape we've been working on and I want to show you something about the cross sections. If I select the cross sections and hit node editing we can see that I've basically got three nodes on my shape with two spans in between. These happen to be Bezier spans. If I click on this, this also has three nodes and two spans and this also has three nodes and two spans. If all the cross sections that you select for a two rail sweep have the same number of nodes then it's possible to use the option within the form that allows you to sweep between spans. So again if we go back and reverse rail direction to keep this smooth here if I just click apply for our standard blend again as we had before we can see the shapes just blend straight from one to the next if we use the option to sweep between the spans it's actually going to join up span to span from each of the shapes so if we click on that we can see that now the shape we've got is going from the span which is evenly distributed each side of the um, half circle there and then our spans here are the long side of the triangle and the short side of the triangle before it goes back here to the two spans there. So it's almost, if you want, like it's connecting the nodes up and we're going to see that in the shape. This is a very powerful function, but it only has certain very specific uses for times when you need to have real strong control over certain types of shapes. So we'll close this shape now. Just delete it. I'm going to pop up the layer manager and just undraw those vectors and we'll draw another layer with some new vectors on it and show you another one of the options within the two rail sweep. I've got two rails here, I'm going to select the first, shift and select the second and then holding shift select all the cross sections, go into the two rail sweep tool, we'll just take the defaults and see the shape that that gives us here. Now we can see that by taking the defaults what it's going to do is extrude the shape along my two rails and it's going to keep the depth um, the same as the original cross sections that were selected here. So these cross sections are all the same height, so I just have a straight line there even though my shape's actually changing. In a lot of cases you may want this to have a more natural flow. Natural objects tend to be um, deeper in the areas that they're wider. So to get that kind of an effect with the two rail sweep we check the option to scale cross section with width. If we click on that, what that's going to do is scale the cross section's height depending how far apart the bits of the vector are that the cross section is effectively being connected to in order to build our shape. So now you can see we have a nice flow of shape as that comes up from uh, areas where the cross section is going to be very thin because the rails are close together up and high in the wide area and then down and tapering off again as once more the rails get closer and closer together and so the cross section is going to get shallower and shallower. Now typically the cross section's height are going to be what determines the height or depth if you prefer to think of it that way as the shape you're building. It's also possible to override this and put in a specific value that the part's going to be scaled to. So that'll still respect the other parameters we've selected, but for instance I could come in here, check the option to scale to exact height, and if I wanted this shape to be exactly half an inch high, we can go ahead, hit apply, it's going to create the same shape, but it's going to scale it up or down to be that specific height that we've entered in the box there. If we uncheck that, then it's going to go back to the original height based on the cross sections and the width of the rails that we have selected. 
So again, I'm just going to close that menu. I'm going to delete the shape we were working with there. Pop up the layer manager. Come to the next layer where I've got some new vectors on here. And we'll just show you how to use the option Connect Rail Nodes. I'm going to select what are two closed shapes. It's possible to use two closed rails as long as one sits completely with inside the other. Shift and select the inner one as the second rail. Shift and select this cross section up here. And then we'll come over to two rail sweep. Now I can see that as this goes around, what's happening is the cross sections are going to get out of sync. If we hit apply, we'll see what that part's going to look like. And if I zoom in on the corners, you can see that they're all twisted up. The reason that that happens is that the shorter, the inner rail is shorter than the outer rail. And it's a little bit like two cars racing around a track. The outer one would have to go faster than the inner one for them both to arrive back at the same place at the same time. We have an option though called Connect Rail Nodes. And assuming that both your rails have exactly the same number of nodes on them, and in this case they do, then I can check that option. It'll only be available if they do have the same number of nodes. And the software will just join the nodes up and put a cross section across each of those points where the two nodes are. So node 1 will be joined to node 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, and so on throughout the shape. You can see how much neater and more even the shape is down the bottom there that we have now. Now it's important when setting the two vectors up in order to do something where you're going to use this option that the, you have the start points in the same place because it's going to use the start point of the vector in order to determine the first node on each of those vectors. So they need to be in this corresponding place on each vector for this to work. In this case we've created what's a nice looking frame perhaps we'd want this to actually be solid and in closed shape so like some kind of a plinth. To do that, we have the option to fill center vector. If we come down, check on that option here, it's just going to take the end point of the cross section where it comes down, and it's going to fill that in with a flat shape. So in this case, where we have the type of cross section I've drawn here, that's going to give us a nice flat shape across the middle of our part. So I'll just close that again. Once more, I'm going to delete that shape. And I'd like to show you a couple of examples that don't use any new options within the two rail sweep, but that are particular types of shapes that you may want to build. And so it's useful to see how you would actually go about building this type of shape using the two rail sweep function. I'm going to hit Control L to bring up the layer manager, choose the layer uh, here or the vectors. And here you can see I've created two rails and these effectively are the sides of a vase type shape. This could also be something like a column, a wine glass, a spindle, or anything that effectively is a shape that you could turn on something like a lathe. In order to generate that type of shape, we need the two rails to be equal, to be evenly spaced apart, and we're going to select and shift and select the two rails, and then you're going to need a semicircle cross section. So a half circle here, I'm going to shift and select that, come over, click on the two rail sweep, and we'll go ahead and hit apply, but to get the true effect of this, we're going to need, you can see there, that's just a flat shape across, we're going to need to check scale cross section with width. When I click on that, it's going to scale the part so that as it gets wider, it gets deeper, as it gets closer together, it gets shallower, and that's going to give me the same effect as if I was creating half a turned shape, as you can see here. So we'll just close that and delete it. And the other specialist shape I'd like to show you is a spun style shape. So again, I'm just going to get some new vectors here. Here you can see I have two circles. I have a cross section. I'm going to select my outer circle, shift and select my inner circle, shift and select the cross section, go into the two rail sweep, make sure I've got my cross sections nice and evenly distributed throughout the two rails, go ahead and hit apply and you can see that this is going to effectively be like taking that cross section and spinning it around in a circle. It's going to leave a hole in the middle where I've got my smaller circle which I can just click the option to fill center vector in order to close that off. So again no new options I'm showing you here but you can see by two 
closed circles like we've got here and this type of cross section some of the um, effects and types of shapes that you'd be able to create using that combination. The last example I'd like to show you, if again I just close and delete what we've been working on there, bring up the layer manager and select a different set of vectors, is how you would go ahead and use the two rail sweep to create one continuous shape that required a number of sets of rails. So as we create shapes with the two rail sweep and they twist around, you saw earlier how if you have a discrepancy between the lengths of your rails, it's possible for the shape to get twisted. The best way to deal with that is to break the rails up into smaller uh, pieces and make multiple sweeps in order to create your finished shape. This is also necessary if you wanted to create a shape that has more than three cross sections in it. So here I've got rails divided into three pieces so we're going to create three separate two rail sweeps but we want one to join onto the end of the previous one. I'm going to use four different cross sections along this shape. I'm going to start by holding, uh, selecting the rail, holding shift and selecting the second rail, holding shift and selecting the first two cross sections, come into the two rail sweep and we're going to go ahead and sweep from this first cross section to this second cross section. I'm just going to hit apply now I'm going to make my next sweep here go from the end, which is this cross section here, to the next cross section here. So I need to make sure I make the same selection and in the right order. So I first selected the outer rail here. So when I select my next set of rails, I need to make sure that I follow that round and still select the outer rail. So if I click on that, the software is going to ask me if I want to keep the current two rail sweep. I'm going to say yes because I would like to keep it and add to it. It will select that vector. I shift and select my inner rail and then I'm going to go from the cross section that was the end of this shape. So we'll click on this one in order to hold shift and go to the cross section here. So if we go ahead, we're going to combine this with the current shape. I'm going to choose merge in case there's any overlap with the ends of those shapes there. And we can see that being swept around and going from that cross section into the next cross section that we've got selected there. Again, if I want to carry that on, I'm going to click on my next rail. I'm going to say yes, I want to keep the current sweep. I'm going to shift and select the inner rail, shift and select the end point of the last uh, shape we created and shift and select the last cross section we've got there. Once again, I'm going to combine with the current shape. I'm going to hit apply and all these are being built into a single component because I keep creating them, combining them with the current shape. So you can see how this would allow you to create very complex, interesting and organic shapes using the two rail sweep function. One last note on this is that just like the create shape function, it's possible to stay within the menu here and create multiple components. Here we just created a single component, but if I wanted to, I could click on the button to start new component, and each time I did that, I'd have the opportunity to enter a new name, and whatever selections I made for the rails and cross sections would be converted into a new component that would be added to the component um, tree. So that concludes this overview video on using the two rail sweep function and hopefully we've shown you that this is one of the most powerful modeling tools that Aspire has and can really create everything from very simple straight extruded shapes all the way through to complex borders and as you've seen at the end here very unusual organic um, type shapes.